Hello, this is Mr. Weirich, and today I'm going to talk to you about Lesson 3-1. That's Chapter 3, the first lesson. So we're talking about a new chapter. Uh, we're still going to be with uh, dealing with proofs. We're going to get back to proofs here in a bit. Um, but what we're dealing with right now is going to be parallel lines and transversals. Uh, this is actually, uh, I want to say, a big part of what's to come. Uh, the, the proofs, of course, are going to be a lot of what we address through geometry, but uh, parallel lines and understanding what it means to have parallel lines is, is going to be a, a really big deal um, as far as it applies to, to different shapes and what it means for those different shapes. So uh, first off, make sure you get those highlighted words that they have in there uh, into your notes. Most of them I have a basic definition up here, so I'm going to talk about that real fast. First off, parallel lines like railroad tracks. That's how I always thought of them. Uh, even though the railroad tracks curve, our parallel lines don't curve. Straight lines, they go on forever. They're never gonna touch, okay? So uh, if we're dealing with parallel lines, it's, it's very, very important to understand they do not have an intersection. Now, if you go back to Algebra 1 and you think about parallel lines that had the same slope, but uh, they had different y-intercepts. So think about your age and my age. Um, we are going along at the same rate. Every day, we both get one day older, uh, so we're going the same speed as far as that goes, but you're never gonna catch me because I have a big head start on you as far as age goes. That's our parallel lines right there. Uh, if we have skew lines, it's very important to remember to think in 3D. So I have a line up here that's going like this, and I have a line down here that's going like this in three dimensions. And those lines, no matter how far I go in any direction, they are not going to cross. Um, if you're dealing with like a cube, I think is the example that they have in there, uh, these front uh, set of lines going up and down here, like from A to B on, this, on these points, this line is never going to intersect if I have H to J on this back one going left to right across the top. If, as long as we are remembering to think in three directions, uh, in three dimensions, sorry, three dimensions, not three directions, these are going in different directions, they are never going to cross each other. Then we've got parallel planes. Uh, it's important to understand what a parallel plane is going to be. Uh, the easiest example I can think of would be the floor, the ceiling put together. They keep going, they're flat, but they are not going to cross each other. We can put lines and points all over either one of those planes, and those planes are still not going to intersect. Uh, when we have a transversal, that's where we have a pair of lines. Uh, normally it's gonna be parallel, but in their book, they're, they're very careful to say, okay, we've got two lines here. The transversal cuts across those, and it creates a bunch of different angles. It creates interior, angles, which would be the ones here on the inside of those two lines, and then it creates exterior angles, which would be the ones on the outside. Okay, so, so this is my I, my interior here, and this is my E all over the place, all surrounding it. That's my exterior uh, angle. Now, on the consecutive interior angles, that's this angle right here, and this angle right here would be consecutive interior, they're on the same side and they're on the inside, the alternate interior would be like this. Uh, we're on the uh, different side of the transversal, but we are still both interior. The exterior ones on the outside, the only really ones, the only ones you really have to worry about a relationship with are going to be the, uh, the ones out here, like this, and like this. Those X's would pair together to make uh, alternate exterior angles. The Y's would pair together to make uh, another set of alternate exterior angles. The corresponding angles, they're on the same side and they are uh, alternating internal, external. I like to think of it like the letter F. Up here at the top we have one and down here under the middle we have one. Those are corresponding angles, okay? Again, corresponding would be like right here and right here. That's my corresponding angles as it comes to this transversal, these lines. 
Now be very careful, understand that parallel lines can run up and down like this, and we have a transversal over here. So we have our alternating exterior, we have our alternating interior, either one of these sets could be alternating interior, but our corresponding angles would be like this one here, this one here, they are corresponding. Okay. Um, the different angles are going to be set up different ways, and uh, as we move through the chapter, we're going to explore the relationship as far as congruence, especially as it pertains to parallel lines. But for today, this should pretty much be it. Make sure you have those definitions down, and any questions, make sure you bring them with, bring them with you to class.